Good morning and welcome to your daily holy hour, your quiet one hour, 60 minutes with the creator of the universe. Just you and he, quietly, in silence. You, less talking, more listening. Hearing the voice of the Almighty, speaking to you, not as God to man, but as father to son, father to daughter. This is who he is. This is who you are. This is your identity. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. This is everything. You are the precious son or daughter of the creator of the entire universe, and all its wonders. Yep, that's you. His great, greatest, most beautiful creation ever. That's you. Regardless of how you feel today, maybe you woke up feeling like crap. Maybe, maybe you woke up feeling happy, joyful, sad, depressed, worried, high anxiety, Whatever you're feeling is just a feeling produced by a thought, a passing thought in your mind. You are not your mind. You are spirit. You will live forever in eternity with your heavenly father. That's the good news. The not so good news, the bad news is that you get to spend the rest of your life dealing with a mind that produces a whole lot of negative thoughts and lies. It produces some good stuff as well. It's awesome. But mostly, it gives you lies that distract you from your Heavenly Father. So that's why we spend this time together every single morning, you and I, the body of Christ, coming together to look upwards, to look at the one, the only, our Heavenly Father. Today, your Bible box is Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket. But on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And now you have it. That's your job. That's your mission for today, for this week. To let your Heavenly Father pour his light into you so that you can go out and shine that light onto others. So many people are suffering out in the world. They're stuck and lost in the darkness. Bring them the light. Get quiet with your Heavenly Father now. Ask Him. Ask Him to do that for you. Father, pour your love, your goodness, pour your light into me so that I may bring you to those who suffer in the darkness and bring them back to you, Father. I'll jump back on at 8.30 for an encouraging message and a personal invitation. Go ahead and get quiet with your Heavenly Father now. Bring out your journal. Record everything you hear, you sense, you feel, you experience. Read your Bible box two more times slowly and really get what God is trying to tell you. The days that I start my daily holy hour feeling like, hmm, I feel disconnected or distracted, distracted. 
And somehow God shows up through my brokenness, in my brokenness. And regardless of how I perform, he is. He's he's the steady. He's the foundation on which I lean. He's consistent. I am not. I am human and broken. And in that brokenness is inconsistency. Some days I feel inspired and motivated and energized and undistracted. And other days I feel the exact opposite. And regardless of how I feel and how I show up, regardless of how you feel each day and how you show up, God is. He always is. For he is unchangeable. He is unstoppable. He is your father. So Zachary Smith shares his prayer and starts us out. Zachary, way to step up, man, and be a man, a real man, shares his heart, not just his head and his ego. We got enough of that out in the world. Look at the egos everywhere. Boof, 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 popping up everywhere. Very few men show their heart because there's very few real men out there. That doesn't mean they're not capable of it. They're just not doing it. Man up, man. Man up, bro. So Zachary launches us. He says, I feel God calling me to be bold in my actions. Bold in all caps. He lives through me. So what can I be afraid of? Life is not present in hiding. Hashtag share your prayer. Zachary, Zachary, Zachary. Well said. For there is no aliveness in hiding. You're right. There isn't. Think of Adam and Eve in the garden when they ran and hid from their heavenly father. There was no aliveness. There was a deadness within them that made them run and hide. If you are hiding in your life right now, if you are playing small, uh, if you are living in the shadows of your life, there is no aliveness in that. Remember, the glory of, a God, the glory of God is man fully alive. The glory of God is a man fully alive. That includes a woman. Be alive. How do you do it? Call on God. Call on God. Rely on his boldness. Rely on his power. Not on your own. That's the good news. You don't have to figure it out. For all you brainiacs, you intellectuals that get stuck in your head all day, every day, stop trying to figure it out. Surrender it to God. Lord, show me how. I'm going to rely on your boldness. I'm going to rely on your power. I'm going to rely on you for all these things, Father. That's the ultimate surrender. That's the dying to self. This is what Jesus calls you to do. Take up your cross and follow me. Where? To Calvary. To be crucified. You being crucified? No. Your ego. Your ego needs to be crucified. It needs to be put to death. Why? Because it's blocking you from your heavenly father. It's your ego. That's what you worship. Sorry, does that sting? It stung for me when I discovered that. I wasn't worshiping God. I was worshiping self, ego, self. 
And so are you. And maybe you're like, no, I'm not, Joseph. Yes, you are. We all do it in different levels. If you're human, that's what you do. Zachary, thanks for the share, brother. Fallon Canham launches us. She says, she shares her prayer. She says, today I sense my heavenly father saying to me, I am always leading and guiding you down my chosen path. But sometimes you just aren't paying attention. <laughs> I get that. Do not be distracted by shiny objects or loud people. Do not wander off the path into the woods where your light can be hidden. Keep looking up to me. And you will see the direction of your path more clearly. Hashtag share your prayer. What a great share. Like we all, ah, I love this. I love the body of Christ and being part of the body of Christ. I got my own share. I'm going to share with you. But like Fallon just shared hers and the same Holy Spirit that just spoke to her heart just boom, hit me in mine and gave me a new perspective. The same Holy Spirit that speaks to Zachary, boom, speaks to all of us. So just know that, that when we share our prayer, it's not out of ego. Like when I share my prayer every single day with you, it's not to pat myself on the back and go, look, look how pious I am. Look how holy. No, it's the opposite. Look how broken and a mess I am. And the creator of the universe wants a relationship with even me. What a loving God. He wants a relationship with even you in all your brokenness and unworthiness. What an awesome God. So get out of the stands in your life and onto the court and share your prayer. Don't compare, share your prayer. Don't compare, share your prayer. Don't compare, share your prayer. Fallon says, and, and also, Joseph, God wanted me to tell you it is going to be a great day. <laughs> okay. I could use a great day. I would love a great day. Thank you, Fallon. Thank you, Heavenly Father. All right. I want a great day. Yes, yes, yes. I believe it. I believe I'm having a great day. All right. Share your prayer. Share your prayer. Don't compare. Share your prayer. Don't compare. Share your prayer. Don't compare. Share your prayer. I'm, I'm being re acting ridiculous right now. Why? Because I'm putting a message into your stubborn brain through music and me acting like a dork of a very powerful message. Stop comparing your prayers, your insights to others. Just share it anyway. Take action. This is how you guys show up in your life. All right, so I'm going to share my prayer. I said, good morning, good father. Thank you for showing me all the amazing things you've been doing in people's lives through me. See, over my birthday weekend, I put out a question to a few people. And I was just inspired to do it. And I said, hey, as a birthday favor to me, what has God done in your life through me or through knowing me? And would you know it that, I couldn't even tell you, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 people, maybe more, responded with what God has been doing in their life through knowing me? Now, did, did I send that message out, that question out to get a pat on my back, to pump up my ego? No. I sent that message out, one, because I was inspired to. I didn't really have any thinking behind it. I was just like, I should ask this. 
And it's to glorify God so that I can share that with others. Hey, look what God is doing in this person's life. Look what God is doing in that person's life. Look what God is doing in this person's life. Look what God can do and wants to do in your life. And I invite you in to relationship with him. I invite you in to relationship with him. I invite you in to relationship with him. One person, only one person accused me indirectly of having an agenda to my question, which was to solicit testimonials for myself. And that's fine. Judge me. Judge me. Woo. Judge me. You don't know me. You don't know my heart. Only God does. Was I looking for testimonials for me? No, it wasn't my intention. However, after people started to share all this stuff, I was like, hey, these are great testimonials for what? My spiritual coaching. For me, no. But to inspire people to work with me in a coaching relationship so that I can what? Show them how to come back to the Father, to deepen their relationship with their Heavenly Father, to get that real connection with God that they're missing in their life, which is blocking their real connection with others, their real connection with themselves, their own identity, their purpose. These are all the symptoms and casualties of being disconnected from their Heavenly Father. Well, God has shown me how to do that. God has now tasked me with a calling on my entire life to go out and show others how to come back to him, how to be in deeper relationship with him. And this is what I'm doing. So you can say whatever you want to say. Oh, you have an agenda behind whatever. Yes, I have an agenda. My agenda is God. My agenda is for you to get connected with him, to get plugged into him, to, to start every day looking up. That's my agenda. If I have to ask and, and pull and solicit testimonials to inspire people to do that, okay, I'm going to use whatever God put in front of me. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, okay, that's fine too. So, I just wanted to share that because that's powerful. And like I'm reading through these things that people are saying that God has done in their hearts and in their lives through some of the words that I've shared in these videos or I've met them one time. And in that interaction, somehow God showed up in me and through me and I spoke some truth into their hearts. And it's exactly what they needed to hear in sometimes the darkest moments of their life. I didn't know it was the darkest moment in their life. God did. So what did God do? He put me, this broken mess dude, right into their life, into their world at that moment. To remind them that they are loved by him. That they are not alone in the darkness. That he is there with them. Such a good father. Such a good father. So I continued on. I said, to see that you, the creator of the entire universe, father, have called me by name out of the darkness. Because remember how messed up my life was? Called me out of the darkness to perform your works in me and through me is both humbling and joyous. Who am I that God, my God should work through me? You have adopted me into your family and now call me son. I have done nothing to deserve this, but you have done it because you say that I'm worth it. Father, thank you. I sense my Heavenly Father responding, my son, you are everything to me, and I am your everything. 
you shall want for nothing. For I, your Father, shall provide for all your needs. You, sh you shall want for nothing. Because I, your Father, shall provide for all your needs. So I replied saying, Father, show me that you are with me in the routine of my day. I want to experience your presence in the mediocre things, the things I dislike doing. I sensed my heavenly father responding, my child, I am with you even when you feel sad or bored or tired or worried or lonely or depressed. In all these moments of your life, I am. In all these moments of your life, I am. A good father does not leave his small child unattended, does he? I am your good father, and you are my beloved son, and I am with you to the end of the ages because you are worth it. Peace be with you, child. You are loved by me. I got the tingles down the back of my neck on that. <clears throat> Peace be with you, child. You are loved by me. Your heavenly father loves you. Loves, loves you tremendously. He is fascinated by you and how beautiful he made you. Good morning, Todd Metza Jr. Good morning, brother. What's up? Valerie Lucy, good morning. She shares her prayer. She says every day. So she, she sends her heavenly father saying this. Every day, look up. Give up to me, my precious daughter. Hashtag share your prayer. That's it. So simple. What a simple share and yet so powerful. Every day, every morning, look up to your heavenly father. Then give up. Literally give up. Stop trying. Stop trying to figure it out. Give it up to him. All of it. For you are his precious child. He will open the doors. Will you have to... Show up and do the work? Yes, you will. But give up the worry. Give up the cares. Give up the concerns. Give up the anxiety. Give up the stress. Give up the overwhelm. Give it up to him. Give it up to him. Then show up and obey whatever he tells you to do. Tracy Sullivan, good morning. Good morning. She says, thank you for sharing and being available to all of us online. Have a God-filled day. Thank you, Tracy. You know, between you and Fallon wishing me a good day, I'm, I'm feeling like tremendous things are going to happen today for me. Thank you. Like, that's awesome. I'm loving it. I'm digging it. All right. So personal invitation, if you have not yet, taking the opportunity, I'd like to invite you to jump on a spiritual clarity call with me. On that call, we'll spend 30 to 45 minutes discussing you, your life, what you're going through right now, what you're wrestling with, what you're struggling with, what you feel stopped in, what you want clarity in. And I'll help you get that on that call. And we'll explore you and I what it will look like to be in a coaching relationship with me so that I can show you and give you the tools that I've used and that I've shared with others to get quiet with your heavenly father every day, to have real connection with him, real connection in this world of fakeness, real, real, real connection with him so that he can fill you up with his peace, with his love, with his joy, 
with your identity, with your purpose, your higher purpose, the calling that he has put on your life. Don't you want to know what it is? I can help you find that. It's what he has equipped me with. These are the talents he's given me. I didn't come up with them. He gave them to me. He put them in me, the broken mess, Joseph Warren. Why? Because somehow you relate with me. Somehow your brokenness connects with my brokenness, doesn't it? Your playfulness connects with my playfulness, doesn't it? Yeah. I know it does. So he knows that he has equipped me to invite you into closer closer relationship with him. If you'd like that, click the, click the link above that I haven't added yet, but I shall. <laughs> you know what? Let me do it right now. Let me do it right now. While you wait patiently. You're such a patient person. Thank you for being patient. It's so awesome. Here we go. Just give me a moment. I'm working here. I'm working here. Schedule your spiritual clarity. Clarity, all caps, call with this guy. And not have fun. You know, some people think that you got to be all serious when you, when we discuss matters of spirituality and God. And you, I don't think we do, right? Maybe with religion and theology. Yeah, but listen, God created humor, right? If God created you and you're made in his image and likeness and you're a funny person and you love funny other funny people and being funny, well, guess where that came from? Burr. God has a sense of humor. Read the Bible. You'll see some of it. <laughs> he puts up with a lot of our ridiculousness, doesn't he? All throughout. Human ridiculousness. Yes, yes. All right. I got to run because I am going to have a great day. I've been told twice. Twice, I'm going to have a good day. You're going to have a good day because you're like me. We're together in this. So show up every single day and do your daily holy hour with me. I invite you. Schedule your spiritual clarity call with me. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. God's got stuff for you. He wants to tell you something about you and about your life. And I know I'm getting excited right now. And you're like, wow, this guy's intense. Wow. I don't know about him. What's there to know? I can help you. Let's go. All right. I love you. God loves you. Have a blessed day. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.